don't panic, I've not become an unboxing channel. I have just got myself DLS 714 Makita 36 volt cordless shop saw. Now I have myself a lovely massive shop saw in one of my previous videos I reviewed it. It's 110 volt but the job that I'm starting next it's gonna have to be cordless. There's no power and I haven't got a generator and generators aren't that cheap to come across but this came out a lot nicer. I haven't got to lug any uh, power sources around. It all just runs off the 18 volt Makita lithium ion batteries. And in the process, I got myself two brand new four amps to power this puppy. So now I've got a few more batteries in my arsenal. I can get a lot more juice for my tools when I need to. So as standard to all tool reviews, I've got a coffee, I've got a knife, let's get this job started. It should be just a lot of cardboard and the tool itself. Okay, what have I got to start off with? I got dust bag, side rails, scrap paper, which comes with a little clear plastic square so you can true up your blade and make sure it's come all good in the box. I've also got I'm not sure. Cardboard. Look how nice and clean that is. So we've got here, already in place, a good clamp for your materials should you need it. And that with a wing nut on the back. Spin that around. Nice positive lock. There's no wobble on that either, which is good. Little pin release here, that release there, that release there. Got these two rails here. And these just go on the side, these are like extra supports for your materials. These. What are these? As you can see here, if I am doing a bevel cut, so release that lever on the back down to loosen. I can do my 45s with miters. This metal bit here will have to move, otherwise I'm going to cut straight into it, and I know I am. So that's going to come over there. I might even just take this off completely. There's a little rubber wheel just down here, and that means if I have it on a flat surface, say I've got this here, I can wind that down, and it gives the bed of the saw just a little bit extra support, and it's not going to rock anywhere. It's got the dust bag which goes on the back just like that that's going to collect a lot of the dust and once it's full I can take off this little lock and that I can empty it into a bin or a bag somewhere ah, so it looks like these holes here they are added support for the sides I like that I haven't actually seen this before so I'm gonna go ahead and stick these on these winding up my feet I get my timber, raise these feet, look at that. So it sits nice and comfortably under the timber. This one here, on the back. It just gives me a little bit of extra support. Obviously the side of the metal here is a little bit lower. So I wonder if that's in place specifically uh, because that was taking too much weight. These just, uh, they, they're kept in place by the metal bracket, but they're not taking the weight of the material. So if you have got uh, a big uh, six by two, for instance, sat on here, it's not gonna bend that metal bracket down. It's gonna sit with its weight on the worktop here. That's a nice little feature, actually. I quite like that. So that, that looks like something that's probably from feedback from Makita. Someone might have said that this metal bracket couldn't take the weight of the materials. It was loosening over time and it was probably causing it to rot. Okay, so I've got this clear plastic square here. I'm going to see how well these positive placement locks are to 0 and 45 and see how true they are. So with the positive placement locks, I can keep it in place by tightening that 
and this won't move if I activate that thumb trigger. Once I loosen this, that thumb trigger will then release and I can move it freely. Now it will lock itself into place at certain positions. So here I've got zero degrees, 15 degrees, 22.5, 45. I can go all the way up to 55 degrees on this side and 45 degrees on the left side. So what other features can I see on here? We have got two battery indicators. So what I'm gonna do is grab my two new batteries. I've got two fully charged four amp batteries, 18 volt, which makes this 36 volt tool. And I'll have eight amps of power. That'll be a perfect amount of runtime for a day, maybe even two days worth of cutting trim work. So if I press this button here, two LED light indicators showing me I've got a full battery here and I've got a full battery here. Now this saw does not run on one battery. If I take out one of these batteries, it will not illuminate any batteries because there is not a complete circuit. If there's no complete circuit, then the saw will not work. You have to have both batteries to give it the energy and power that it needs to run. We've got a 190mm, 20mm bore, tungsten carbide, Makita standard blade. This is not an Effie cut, this is just a regular blade. This also features a electric brake. Once I release the trigger, within a second that blade is stopped. If there is an accident where my hand is away or it slips, there's no uh, extended rundown time. If I need that blade to stop for an emergency, I can stop it. If I compare the DLS714 by Nikita to the LS1019, oh Jesus! <laughs> I never realised um, how big my saw was compared to uh, a standard saw. But Christ! This is actually probably an ego booster, if anything. Small and powerful, big chungus. So super looking forward to second fixing my first uh, cordless house, pretty much. This will be the first time I've gone completely cordless second fixing a house. On price work as well, that's gonna help me a lot because I haven't got to worry about any pat testing, no trading needs, no sourcing for power. Just making sure that every morning my batteries are fully charged I should be good to go. Okay, now, so I've been using the DLS714 for about two to three weeks now on a second fix job, so I've been cutting lots of arc trade, lots of skirting with it on these 18 volt batteries, and it is definitely worth its weight in gold. 
So this 36 volt unit runs off two 18 volt batteries. Here I've got in two 5 amp batteries and that has done for me an entire house of architrave and skirting. Now easily you can get a day's worth of use out of this. So at the moment I'm on low battery for these two because I've been using them all day. Uh, but they've put out a good amount of use through these batteries. So tonight I can charge them, tomorrow I can come back and use them all over again for another full day's worth of cutting. So a couple of specs about this, this is a 190mm blade which is still in very good condition. It's got a 20mm bore along with the electric brake as standard. So this brushless motor has an RPM of 5700. Uh, that's a really good speed and because it's got the brushless motor it's not going to put too much pressure on your batteries while you're cutting it. It's going to keep it at a nice steady pace so when you're cutting it's not going to drain your batteries as quick as you think. The overall weight of the tool is 13 kilograms, that's without the bench or clips attached, that is just the bare unit, so quite light. You can easily carry this in one hand. I have attached this to the Makita workbench. Uh, because I'm now using a smaller chop saw on this, this is a lot easier for me to get across site. It's a little bit of a bumpy ground out there, so I won't be dragging it anywhere, but while this is attached to the bench, I can lift both at the same time. So not only is this a cordless tool that you can take anywhere on the job site, is light enough so you literally can take it anywhere on the job site. So will this chop saw be replacing my big LS1019 from Makita? I think it will. Um, this saw has not let me down at all so far. It's been wonderful to use and great to work with. The dust extraction bag itself is great for getting that dust and collecting it out of the way. Even if you're not using a dust extractor unit itself, it's still really good at getting the dust away from your workpiece and out of your face. The fact that it runs on the same batteries as the rest of my Makita tools, I haven't got to go out and buy new batteries to power this, I could just take one out of my drill if I need to and slot it in, ready to go. Like I said before, it might be small but it's got a wide slide capability onto it, so you can get lots of large materials into this and not even struggle to cut through some thick timber, so that's impressive with it being a cordless tool, you don't need the power of a cordless tool to cut through thick materials. Uh, the only thing I wasn't too fond of, which is something that could not be uh, changed, was once I got this out of the box, the rails were a bit jarring and sticky, but that is simply because they hadn't been worn in yet. And now they've been using this for a couple of weeks, that's really smooth, the ball bearings have got the oil all around them, and the rails themselves have got the oil on them too, so that is now a smooth functioning chop saw action. Has this changed my idea on how powerful cordless tools can be? Yes, definitely. I've used the cordless Makita chop saw before that ran on the one 18 volt battery. Now this has got two, this is a slightly powerful motor and you get more run time from your batteries. So this is an upgrade of an upgrade, fantastic tool and I highly recommend it to anyone who's looking for cordless capabilities on their job site. So that is it for me on this video reviewing the DLS 7141 Makita 36V cordless shop saw. But I hope you enjoyed the video and if you have any questions or anything else you want to ask me, stick it in the comments down below. Do not forget to like this video and subscribe. You can feel free to check me out on Instagram if you want. The link will be down below in the description if you want to follow me daily on my updates through site. So thank you very much and I'll see you all soon.